Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So for today's Let's Brew deck tech, I'm building around a commander that messes with the fabric of time and space itself. So when you're playing with this commander, you've got to be really careful because when you're messing with time, certain things can... Just kidding, I didn't freeze. Anyways, let's jump into it. So today's episode is actually a Patreon selected deck tech. And once a month, patrons get to vote on what commander that they'd like to see in an upcoming episode. And the one that they chose was Obeka Brute Chronologist. Obeka is a 3-4 Ogre Wizard that costs 1 blue, black, red, and she has tap the player whose turn it is may end the turn. So you exile all spells and all abilities from the stack. The player whose turn it is discards down to the maximum hand size, damage wears off, and this turn and until end of turn effects end. So, Obeka is basically a Sundial of the Infinite, but for kind of all players as long as they're willing to end their turn. Basically, so when you're doing kind of and the turn shenanigans, you can do some really cool things because basically there are certain ways that magic is supposed to work and Obeka says, well, let's just stop those things from working in the normal way that they would. Now, I'm probably gonna have to give you some cards for examples of this unless you've already got some in mind, but basically the way that we can build around this deck is to take advantage of certain cards that otherwise wouldn't give us nearly as much value, but because Obeka can mess with time, they give us an absurd amount of value. So yeah, let's just start with that and let's go through some example cards to start. So when it comes to some, come to some draw spells, let's start off with things like Ideas Unbound, which basically lets us draw three cards, but then at the end of the turn, we have to discard three. Now, Obeka says, uh, you know what about the discard three? Let's just not do that. Let's just, you know, draw three cards for two mana. And at the end of the turn, nope, we're just going to, you know, get that off the stack. And uh, yeah, you, you don't have to discard. So that's a pretty good thing. Uh, Avaricious Dragon is a, a longer term effect. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an initial card. At the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. So discarding your hand, not great. Uh, but uh, again, Obeka says, you know what? Let's just skip that part. Let's just get the, uh, the good part about drawing an additional card and not worry about that discarding our hand. Unless we actually want to, this deck actually does want to have creatures in the graveyard at certain points. We'll get to those cards here in a bit. So things like Faithless Saluting can also come into play that Obeka doesn't even, you know, really help us out with. Draw two cards, discard two. We're not going to be using the end of the turn shenanigans with this card. But again, we do want to potentially ditch certain creatures and get them into the graveyard because we're going to be playing some reanimation effects like Footsteps of the Gorio and Felden of the Third Path. Footsteps of the Gorio... Is an arcane sorcery. The arcane part really doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, says return to our creature card from your graveyard to play. Sacrifice that creature at end of turn. So for three mana, we can reanimate any one of our creatures in our graveyard. And yet normally we would be sacrificing them uh, at the end of the turn. But Obeka says, how about we just don't? How about we just, you know, keep that creature around for as long as we want? So yeah, again, Obeka can really mess with time and say, you know what? Let's just get rid of that nasty little sacrifice uh, uh, piece. Uh, and then, yeah, Obeka can really take advantage of a card like Felden of the Third Path. Pay two in red, tap him. Create a token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact addition to its other types. It gains haste, sacrifice, begin the next end step. So again, Felden kind of reanimates, basically makes a token copy of something from our graveyard. Uh, but we do have to sacrifice it, but again, Obeka says, nope, you can keep it around. So yeah, just basically for a repeatable three mana, you know, basically getting an additional token copy of a really powerful creature in our graveyard. And yeah, it can be a, a very powerful thing when used correctly. We can also utilize our opponent's creatures as well, though, with things like Gruesome Encore and Puppeteer Click. Gruesome Encore says, put our creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. If that creature would leave the battlefield, exile instead of putting it anywhere else. So yeah, basically, Obeka says... Hey, you know that eggs out the end of the turn effect. Now nah, let's just skip that part and just keep that creature around. So yeah, for three mana, being able to reanimate our opponent's best creature, that can be huge. Uh, Puppeteer Click is somewhat similar, but kind of on a body in a, in a repeatable effect somewhat. 
Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put target creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste at the beginning of the next, your next end step, exile it, and it's got persist. So basically, puppeteer click on each ETB when it comes in the first time, and then when it persists, we get this twice. So yeah, we basically get two creatures from our opponent's graveyards. And again, normally we'd have to exile them at the end of the turn. But Obeka says, why don't you just stick around for a little bit, all right? See, so yeah, Obeka can just be a really good way to overutilize these cards that otherwise would have a downside. Uh, some other cards that can really help us out in taking advantage of our opponent's creatures are ones that actually take advantage of cards in their hand, like Treacherous Urge and Zara. Treacherous Urge says, target opponent reels their hand. You may put a creature card from uh, from it into play under your control. That creature gains haste, sacrifice at end of turn. Yeah, so basically, five mana. Pick whichever opponent you want and uh, take the best creature out of their hand. It goes directly into play. Normally, you'd have to sacrifice it, but you know, instead of sacrificing it, you just want to stick around. Zara is a repeatable effect, a 4-3 flyer. Uh, whenever she attacks, look at defending player's hand. You may put a creature card from it onto the battlefield under your control. Tapped and attacking that player or planeswalker they control, return that uh, creature to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So yeah, basically, you're just instead now getting that creature out immediately. Already tapped and attacking that player or planeswalker they control, and then yep, you get to let it keep. You get to let it stay around under your control because of Obeka. Now, there are some other repeatable effects that we have that can really take advantage of either our creatures or opponent's creatures, like Mimic Vat. Mimic Vat says, Imprint, whenever a non-tone creature dies, you may exile that card. If you do return each other card, exile with Mimic Vat to its owner's graveyard. Three and tap. Create a token that's a copy of a card exiled Mimic Vat. It gains haste. Exile at the beginning of the next end step. So again, we can just get rid of that exile effect. And this is basically, again, pay three, make a copy of whatever creature that we imprinted with Mimic Vat. This is just kind of a, oh gosh, a creature token factory for us, a value factory, depending on what we exile with it. Again, we could have some ETBs, LTBs, and we'll get to some really big targets here in a bit. Flame Shadow Conjuring is in shaman that says, Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay red. If you do put a token onto the battlefield, that's a copy of that creature. That token gains haste, exile beginning next end step. Again, we're going to be getting a lot of creatures coming into play under our control with, you know, those reanimation effects. And now just for a red mana, we can make an additional copy of that creature. And you know what? That creature is also going to stick around because of Obeka. So basically, yeah, just pay one to get into extra copy. And yeah, the, the, the value that we can get out of a card like this is absolutely absurd throughout the game. Now, I did mention that we are going to have some big targets for this. Uh, obviously, we have targets for our opponent's thing. So if they've got some good creatures in their graveyard or hand, great. But we can take advantage of our own as well in our own graveyard, like Overseer of the Damned, Sepulchre Primordial. Overseer of the Damned is a 5-5 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, we can destroy a target creature. Whenever a non-token creature an opponent controls dies, create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token. So first off, a fantastic ETB that can really help this deck out again. We can take out one of our opponent's creatures and then reanimate it later with something else. And then whenever their things die, we get zombies. So again, making a token copy of this with, again, one of our other effects is a fantastic way because, again, again, each of them are going to trigger separately. We're going to get multiple zombies every single time. And then again, every single time we get one of these things into play, it's going to destroy one of our opponent's creatures, which again, really helps us out. Spoke by Mordial is another one that can be an absolute bomb in this deck. A 5-4 with Intimidate. It says when it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. This one just straight up. We don't have to use Obeka to end the turn to stop those creatures from going away. This one just straight up reanimates three of our opponent's creatures. And again, if we can make token copies, if we can reanimate this back, we're going to get more and more value out of this. Uh, speaking of value, let's talk about some Encore creatures that can really help us out. Amphim, Mu Amphim Mutineer and Rakasha Debaser. Uh, Amphim Mutineer says, when it enters the battlefield, exile up to one target non-Salamander creature. That creature controller creates a 4-3 blue Salamander creature token warrior. So this one is just a good way to get rid of creatures. Again, with Encore, if it's in our graveyard, we can pay its Encore cost. Again, it's Encore is 4 blue blue. Exile this card from your graveyard for each opponent. Create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn of Fable. They gain haste, sacrifice, and they gain the next end step. Activate only as a sorcery. So we basically get three tokens of this. We get, again, three of those triggers. And again, with Obeko, we can basically say, you know what, those Encore tokens would normally go away, but let's just keep them around. Uh, Raksha, Rakshasha, oh, that is really hard to say, Debaser. Uh, I'm sure I said it wrong still anyways. Uh, whenever it attacks, put target creature card from depending player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control with Encore, six black black. Yeah, that's even better. Uh, just be able to reanimate three creatures and, and again, keep them all around. Fantastic, especially if we can keep attacking with this. Uh, but let's go on to what I would consider the golden pick of the deck. There's a lot of great choices for this kind of a deck, but Arami the Dead Tide can be a fantastic one. Tap to exile cards from your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have. Target creature card in your graveyard has Encore until end of turn. The Encore cost is equal to its mana cost. This basically lets any of our creatures have Encore. 
So yeah, again, basically making, again, depending on the number of opponents that we have, three copies of one of our best creatures, and again, we have to keep them around. So again, whether that's three copies of a Sepulchral Primordial to get us nine of our opponent's creatures from their graveyards or Overseer of the Damned. And again, with Obeka, we can keep that creature or all those copies of creatures around. So just a fantastic pairing for a deck like this. But yeah, again, there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with Obeka as your commander. And if you're looking to see the full list and the upgrades, make sure you check out those links in the description below. And while you're at it, make sure that you comment below and let me know what your favorite thing about Obeka is. What kind of cards would you really utilize with Obeka? So yeah, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.